Hi everybody, welcome to Meconomist. Hi all. Sir, you got a green light, you know. You just don't introduce a convertible this irresistible in the middle of winter. In this video, I'll be focusing on the things that are in the GT convertible with the premium package that you can't get on the base model. And at the end of the video, I'll try to figure out if it's worth the $53,000 price tag that it comes with. That price happens to make it the most expensive non-Shelby Mustang on the market today. Unfortunately, I hardly had any time to film, so I will splice in some footage from my previous Mustang video, as well as some footage from the Ann Arbor Cars and Coffee I attended with this car. Check out my full in-depth 2018 Mustang review if you want all the other quirks and features. And read my column on autotrader.com for more. Just kidding, I am nothing compared to Doug DeMiro. Anyways, this past weekend was the first time I've driven the 2018 model year with the 5 liter V8. It's also the first time I've ever driven a convertible Mustang. Now I've always been skeptical of the Mustang GT convertible, especially with an automatic because that $53,000 plus price tag on the one that I tested is only about five grand off the price of a brand new Shelby GT350. I have to admit, after actually driving it, I am pleasantly surprised. In fact, I would say that the upgrade from my girlfriend's 2018 EcoBoost to this 2018 GT is a much bigger upgrade than the upgrade from a 17 model year to an 18 model year in the base trim, even though there's a body style upgrade between those two model years. First off, there's very little pretense for top line performance in this one. This model has the premium trim, which gives you leather everywhere, a big touch screen, temperature controls up the wazoo, and a bunch of other cool features. Best of all, you get a massive 12 inch digital instrument cluster. This is the first all digital display ever offered on a Mustang. You can customize the colors, you can choose your gauge layout, you can tailor each selectable drive mode, and I think the graphics on it are actually better than the graphics on the center console screen. This 12 inch screen is an optional extra on the EcoBoost Premium and the GT Premium. There are all these so-called track apps, which yes, you can still get on the convertible for that top-down track day feel. Are these features a bit poserish on this one? Eh, probably. But hey, I mean, at this point, you're in a bright orange convertible Mustang with an automatic, so clearly you don't really care what the Jalopnik comment section thinks. Of course, this Mustang has heated and cooled seats, and those are essential in a convertible with black leather seats, because they will both get scaldingly hot if you park in the sun with the top down, as well as freezing cold if you live in a colder climate. One of the amazing features on a lot of different Fords is the steering wheel heater. It works almost instantaneously. A lot of heated seats take about a minute or so before you actually start to feel them warm up. But on all the Fords that I've driven that have heated steering wheels like this one, they heat up almost within five seconds of hitting the button. Since you have the automatic, you also get adaptive cruise control, which is personally my favorite part of driving any automatic vehicle. To be clear, I still prefer manual, but when there's a lot of high traffic highway driving to be done, then the adaptive cruise almost makes up for the lack of a manual. Overall, the interior is quite luxurious and nobody will turn their nose up at the quality and feel when they're sitting in it. The back seats in leather are even more comfortable than the cloth back seats, as long as you're not too big. But since it's a convertible, you can put the top down and even your taller friends won't feel claustrophobic in the back. Okay, now we have to talk about the sound. As tested, I had the active exhaust feature. Honestly, it sounds fucking awesome, but I can barely tell the difference between all the different modes. Quiet mode is definitely quieter than the other modes, but it's far from tame. And to me, normal sport and track mode pretty much sound the same. Some of you might have a more discerning ear, but I honestly just couldn't tell the difference. If you listen to normal and track back to back, I guess you can kind of tell there's a bit more going on. But if you just start it up in one mode, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one it is. If it were me, 
I just go with the active exhaust and not bother with any of the modifications, especially because with the active exhaust and the premium trim, you can have a quiet start mode. This feature is called the uh, friendly neighbor mode, which means you can set it to start in quiet mode during certain hours of the day. And uh, I thought that was pretty funny because I definitely felt like I could have woken people up when I started up in normal mode. Now, how about performance? All you need to know is that yes, it's fast enough. And it actually corners like a sports car. If you care about more details other than it's fast and sporty, then you should probably go for the fastback or the manual transmission or both. Plus, for five grand more, you could buy a GT350. And you could probably buy one for slightly less than that on the used market. With the automatic, I find it's most fun to just throw it into sport mode and let the computer do the shifting. The paddle shifters do work, but they're small and they're attached to the wheel, so you never know which one is up and which one is down, and they never seem to be exactly where you need them when you need them. You can feel that the GT convertible is heavy as well. The suspension can handle the weight, but you can definitely feel it in the front end with a bigger engine, and is definitely more of a brute force instrument rather than a scalpel. The Fastback EcoBoost that my girlfriend has is noticeably more nimble in the corners. That being said, that increase in power and the awesome V8 sound more than makes up for the difference in handling finesse. And with the wind in your hair and the open sky with the soft top down and the whole experience feels special in a way that I never expected from this car. Maybe it's because it reminds me of my Miata. I don't know, there's something just very relaxing and carefree about an open top sports car. Speaking of the soft top, its operation is simple and easy to operate. You could always wish for a faster top, but this one is quick enough that you'll be able to get it up or down at pretty much any stoplight. I really came to appreciate the convertible Mustang experience after driving this one. I still do have one lingering issue that remains though, which is the looks. The GT Fastback, in my opinion, is one of the best looking cars that you can buy new for under $100,000. And all the parts of the body that the convertible shares with the Fastback still look great. I especially love the blacked out grille and the black wheels that you get with the appearance package that this one has. In addition to the sweet quadruple tailpipes and the front hood vents, those are all cool. However, with the soft top up, the convertible is not nearly as elegant and sporty looking as the Fastback. With the top down, it looks awesome, but it still doesn't quite have the balanced taut look that the Fastback has. Side by side, you can really tell the difference between the black soft top coupe look and the body colored Fastback look. So if looks are something you really care about, that black cloth top might be a turnoff unless you plan on driving with the top down all the time. Overall though, the 2018 Mustang GT convertible with the premium package totally earns its $53,000 plus price tag. Now. I don't have $53,000 to buy a Mustang, but it's hard to find something on the new car sports car market at that price tag that will give you more of everything that you could possibly want than the Mustang. You've got the looks, you've got the speed, you've got the comfort, you've got the luxury, you've got all the tech. What more could you want? Hey, quick interruption. I am editing the video right now and I realized that I didn't add the fact that you can now get Waze integrated into your Ford Sync 3 app link feature. So if you update your Sync 3 and you update your Waze app on your iPhone, uh, then when you plug in your iPhone, Waze will just show up as if it's one of the basic apps on Ford Sync 3. Uh, you have to have that option on your vehicle, um, the, the app link option that is, in order for it to work but it's pretty cool that it's now fully integrated into the Sync 3 system. You can get Waze with like Android Auto, I think. I don't have an Android, so I don't know, but this is the first time that a manufacturer has integrated it directly with their own operating system. So, pretty cool feature, and uh, yeah, back to the video. This Mustang would be an awesome all-purpose vehicle if you live in a warm climate, and it could be a perfect weekend car for anyone. If it was me and I did have $53,000 to spend on a Mustang, I'd still go for the manual, but even with the slightly diminished looks, I think I'd be tempted by the convertible. Thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.